So I know this image looks pretty simple, but there's actually a lot that went into making it. I still can't totally wrap my mind around the fact that I'm making this video right now. Like 100,000 subscribers? Like, this is blowing my mind. Now, of course, like all the YouTubers say, when you hit a milestone, you say, I couldn't do this without you. But I mean, that is like the God's honest truth, right? Like I would not have 100,000 subscribers without 100,000 people following this crazy adventure here on YouTube. And so I created this image specifically to celebrate us and really represent what it is that we do here and what I love about about this channel and so uh, maybe at cursory glance it looks pretty simple but I want to take you through the creative process of this image what went into making it and so just to explain the image obviously it's a hundred cups of coffee and tea because you know I gotta have my cup of coffee here to keep my hands from going all over the place uh, but it represents the hundred thousand of you out there and if you look even closer that the underlay underneath those cups of coffee and tea is the map of the world because it continues to astound me that I can just set up my camera here in my studio and every Thursday connect with a hundred thousand of you all over the world. So the idea for this entered my brain and the very first thing that I bought was the map because I knew, okay, I'm gonna need a map under it. I wasn't really sure how big it needed to be, like a smarter person, a more patient person would have like got the 100 cups and set those out, understood like the dimensions and size, but I was like, yeah, I'll just buy this one on Amazon. And it showed up and it was huge. I'm like, there's no way I'll use this whole thing. Oh wait, yeah, wait. But I figured, okay, well, let's at least like have the whole map available if I need it. So I needed a tabletop. Now, I could could have done it on the floor, but I thought that'd be really tricky for setting up the lighting. So I knew I was gonna shoot with this with artificial light. So I pulled out what is my faux wall that I always have here in the studio. It's light on one side, dark on the other side, but it's really nice and big. So I just set that up on top of the table that I usually shoot on. And then lo and behold, rolled out that map and it was the perfect size. And so then from there, it was a matter of thinking, well, okay, how do I capture like all of this, right? Like obviously I need to get the camera up high and then I probably also need a wider angle lens. So I used my 24 to 70 millimeter lens and I put it all the way to 24, which has a little distortion, but you can fix it in post. It's not like the biggest deal in the world. And then I ended up having to hoist the C-stand all the way to the ceiling. Like I was worried that I would eventually need to put the map on the ground, but I didn't. The ceiling was just the right height. And so then I also started to set up the lighting. So what I started out with was my Godox AD600 Pro mono light, that's flash. And then I attached the 55 inch octagon soft box, figuring that I wanted pretty soft, even light across the scene. Now, eventually I did also then pull in a second mono light just to really kind of help fill even more light into the space and soften that light even further. And so then the next biggest modifier that I already had was a 35 inch square soft box. So things were looking good, but the problem was, and not what I intended, but the map itself was laminated. And so it has this shiny surface. I didn't realize that it was laminated when I bought it. I thought it was matte but it is what it is. So I thought, okay, well, what can I do? Well, I can't really reposition the lights or make any modifications in this case, just because I only have so much space to work with. And I like the way that this lighting is going to communicate in terms of the glasses. So I thought, okay, what's my one solution? We talked about it in last week's video. We pull out the dulling spray, right? We get that matte spray and just spray down the side of it. Cause mostly that's where the glare was happening. You know, you could cut it a little bit uh, by adding some sort of polarizing filter but I really didn't want to affect the quality of the image. So I thought, let's do a little dulling spray. It's going to be under the glasses anyway. It's not like it's the first thing you notice. And so then it was all about finding a hundred mugs. And so surprisingly enough, in my own personal collection between the studio and my own kitchen at home, I have 50 mugs, but that meant I needed 50 more mugs. So me and my little buddy, we hit up the local Goodwill and we just started going crazy. I'm like, all right, let's get whatever fun colors. Cause I wanted this to be really vibrant and exciting and eclectic because obviously this is an eclectic bunch of humans here on the internet. And so then we rolled that up to the checkout line and the poor checkout guy is like, who is this woman and why does she need 50 mugs? <laughs> but then we got them home, set them up and I realized, oh crap, they've all got those price tags on them and those are not fun to take off. But the easiest way to take off a price tag I've found is just stick it in the water and then let it soak for a minute and then it scrubs right off. So Calvin helped me out and then we set to the fun task of arranging 
arranging it all in the scene and really making sure because I knew from a crop standpoint that I wanted the two by three crop. So made sure to position everything within the map so that the crop would be right, make sure all the handles were just perfectly imperfect in terms of like zigzagging directions and things like that. And then of course, the very time consuming part of it all was actually brewing the coffee and tea and pouring that into the cups. This is one of those moments when I wish I worked at Starbucks and I could just get those big old containers of coffee and be good. And so then we were ready to take the shot. But you know me, when I photograph a cup of coffee, I like a certain amount of bubbles on the surface because you, you know, pour a cup of coffee and like I'm looking at my coffee right now, there's these little bubbles in there. Now, of course, those dissipate over the time. And this took probably, I mean, just the brewing process and the creating of the tea and the coffee. I mean, that was at least like three hours in itself. And so a lot of the coffee had settled. And so what I did is then you just take a, like a thin little stick and you kind of whisk it around and it aerates it and creates those bubbles on the top and then I had Calvin manning the computer it was tethered he knows how to push the button so he hit the button and then I continued to do that over and over again until I got like a good variety of them and so then what I was left with was 24 different versions of this image which then I carefully stitched together erased layered masked until then I had the final shot but of course it would not be an epic celebration if we didn't have some sort of giveaway. And so our friends over at Canon Canada have agreed to give away two items to one lucky winner. They are giving away the Ivy printer, which I got sent one of these over the holidays and it is so much fun. It's a little pocket sized printer. You connect it up to your phone and you can print out whatever beautiful images you've captured in order to keep with you or share with friends. And then they're also giving away an EOS SL2 camera. So for anybody, who's like, oh, I really want to get a DSLR, I want to level up, this is your chance. So if you want to enter the giveaway, all the details are linked down below. We're doing this over on Instagram. So hop on over there, enter your name and win.